welcome to the next edition of Avid Online, where learning never stops. Today, I have the privilege of introducing you to the world of ballet. My name is Ashifa, and I'm a ballet teacher, as well as the founder and director of the Ballet Festival of India. Just like India has Bharatnatyam, Kathak, and Odissi as their classical dance forms, the West also has its classical dance form in ballet. It began in the 1400s in Italy, that's where its origin was, and they were performed during grand celebrations at the royal courts by the nobility. In the 1500s it moved to France, and by the 1600s under King, King Louis XIV, ballet was codified, it was structured. The first ballet school was formed there as well. It's for this reason most of the terms in ballet are in French. After being properly established in the 1600s in France, ballet spread. It spread to Russia and Denmark in the 1700s. It grew and flourished in Russia in the 1800s. It then spread across the world. You can find ballet now in Cuba, China, Australia, South Africa, Brazil, um, and you can even find it in India today. While ballet is still in its early stages in India, it's in a position to grow due to the exposure to movies and reality shows and um, just the globalization of the world. We all have access to everything at this point. So hopefully ballet will have a bright and long future in India. When ballet began in the 1400s in the Italian royal courts, it was very different. It was performed in the round. The nobility who were the performers wore heavy costumes and masks. They didn't jump and they didn't have very high leg extension. Ballet was first performed primarily by the nobility and mostly by men. It wasn't until 1681 that the first female professional ballet dancer was noted and her name was La Fontaine. Over time, what people wore for a ballet changed. In the 1720s, skirts were shortened, slippers were worn on feet, and tights were worn so that people could see the ballet feats that dancers were able to accomplish. In 1830, point shoes were introduced. Marie Taglioni is credited as being the first person to dance on point. Point shoes are the shoes that enable ballet dancers to stand on their toes. The most common image that comes to everyone's mind when we think of ballet is the tutu, but there are actually three different types of tutus. There is the romantic tutu, which is the long tutu that goes beyond the knees. There is the classical tutu, which is in the bell shape. And there is the pancake tutu, which is a flat tutu. Now let's talk briefly about the most core part of ballet, a ballet class. It is the foundation of all learning in ballet, and it is broken up into two parts. The first part is the bar, and the second part is the center. Here are just a few of the things basic to ballet. The five feet positions, the arm positions, a demi-plie, a développé, an arabesque, a grand jeté, and much more. But what do you wear in a ballet class? You wear ballet shoes, which can be either made of canvas or leather. You wear tights. You wear a leotard if you're a girl, or you wear a t-shirt if you're a boy. Dancers must train on a regular basis, for hours every day, to reach a professional level. But even as a hobby, ballet is wonderful. There are so many benefits, socially, physically, and mentally. Ballets can be categorized into three types. The most famous type is the classical ballet. These are the full-length ballet stories. They're full of characters and plot twists and are inspired by mythical creatures as well as gods and goddesses. And women have a central role. They're very often a love story associated with it as well. They're traditional in the sense of the costumes as well as the technique that's used in ballet. These are a few of the famous ones that you could find. The second type of ballet is the neoclassical ballet. These are really abstract and have no plot, and the costumes have been stripped bare and are very simplistic in nature. They are exemplified by the choreographer, George Balanchine. Here are some of the few of the famous ones that you could watch. The third type of ballet is the contemporary ballet. It incorporates both classical as well as modern dance techniques. Whilst it uses classical ballet, it allows for a greater range of motion than normal, traditional, or even neoclassical ballets would. These are a few of the famous choreographers that can be associated with contemporary ballets. There are many elements that must come together to create a ballet. The choreographer, the music, the dancers, 
the lights, the sets, the costumes, and all the people on stage that help make the ballet run smoothly. Ballet is a performing art, and there is no right or wrong way to appreciate art, especially ballet. One thing that you can do to help you is to read about the ballet beforehand to understand what the choreographer's purpose and intentions were. But to me, the most important part of appreciating a ballet is to experience it. What are the emotions and feelings that are evoked when you watch a ballet? Are you watching one dancer on stage? Are you watching the formations on stage? Are you switching between the two? Does the music move you with the movement? Are you allured by the costumes or does your mood change with the lights? Are you watching fast feet or slow formations? Whatever it is that captivates you, the more you watch a ballet, the more you're likely to enjoy it. So watch a lot of ballet. Here are a list of some of my favorite ballet companies from around the world. Pick any one and you will be enthralled. And here are some of my favorite dancers. Just a few because there are so many and too many to name. But I picked these because they are global dancers. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy ballet more now.